So welcome to the last uh, unit in the topic of uh, waves, the electromagnetic spectrum. So what we will learn. So by the end of this unit, you should know the following. That light is part of a continuous electromagnetic spectrum. All these waves travel at the same speed in free space. And you might be able to guess what that speed is. And the order of the electromagnetic spectrum is in terms of decreasing wavelength and increasing frequency. Some of the uses of the electromagnetic radiations. And the detrimental effects of excessive exposure of the human body to electromagnetic waves. And finally, simple protective measures against those risks that we've just mentioned. So first, let's think about discovering invisible waves. So close your eyes and imagine you've been blindfolded. You can't see anything. So how could you tell that another person was close by? How can you tell you're outside? How can you tell it's just been raining from a thunderstorm? Or how can you tell that the sun is indeed shining? Okay, this is where electromagnetic radiation can come in. So remember this. Amplitude, wavelength, time, displacement, crest and trough. Okay, electromagnetic radiation is known as a transverse wave. So what I want you to do now is pause the video and in your workbook, basically draw the particular wave, which is on the uh, presentation, and label the wave with the following terms. Okay, and then we'll come back and see if you've remembered the uh, different parts of a wave. Okay, welcome back. Okay, now let's check your answers. Okay, so the displacement okay how far that wave moves is on the y-axis the crest is the maximum displacement and the trough is the minimum displacement from the resting position okay this, this arrow here gives the resting position for transverse waves the direction of the energy propagation is of course at right angles to the motion of the wave as it goes up and down okay the amplitude is the distance from the rest position to the crest or conversely the rest position to the uh, trough the wavelength is going to be the distance between troughs or distance between crests okay as we go along in time so hopefully you got all of that correct okay so looking at the electromagnetic spectrum we all now use mobile phones they're kind of an important part of technology so I want you to now write down a list of all the things that your modern mobile phone in your pocket can do. Here is a hint. They also make phone calls. Okay, so electromagnetic radiation and this electromagnetic spectrum is everywhere. Okay, text messaging or SMSs require radio waves. Calls require radio waves. Wi-Fi involves microwaves. Camera on your phone involves visible light, Bluetooth involves microwaves, and the GPS, which tells people where your phone is, or where you are as well, uh, for say Google Maps, is microwaves as well. So what I'm basically saying is that all the communication tasks on your phone require something involving, or a type of wave involved in the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, so the electromagnetic spectrum is critical to your modern life. And what we're going to do now is basically go through the different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. Okay, so the electromagnetic spectrum is a group of waves that are unique in the sense that they all travel through space at the speed of light. Okay, 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. Pretty fast. Okay, they are all transverse waves which means that the direction of the wave is at right angles to the energy transfer. They are all made up of electrical and magnetic force fields. That's a little bit more complex for IGCSE. We'll go through more of that in IB. They have more energy if the frequency is high. Okay, so if they have smaller wavelengths, they're going to have higher energy. That's kind of how we kind of uh, list the different waves, which we'll see on the next slide. And they have less energy if the frequency is low, long wavelengths. 
So let's now look at the electromagnetic spectrum uh, visually in terms of a diagram. So you can see that the radio waves have a very low frequency, okay, because they have a very long wavelength, which means they are low in energy, okay. So the size of the wavelength is basically the, the length of the Empire State Building, okay. Microwaves are about the, the length, the wavelengths about the length of an ant. Uh, they're beginning to get high energy levels. That's why we use them for cooking in microwave ovens. Infrared, the, the heat from the sun, it's about the uh, length, the wavelength is about the eye of a needle. Okay. Uh, the visible wavelength, we're looking at the, the, the length of a protozoa in terms of wavelength. Okay. Uh, the size of a virus is ultraviolet. So again, this is now getting really shorter wavelengths, so a lot higher energy. Okay. So red light has a lower energy than, say, ultraviolet light or, or violet light. Okay. Uh, size of a protein is about the uh, wavelength of an X-ray. Now we're getting into the really high frequency, short wavelength, high energy um, waves. Um, the X-ray, um, yeah, so a range between the size of a protein and the size of an atom. And the gamma rays are about the, uh, the wavelength of an atomic nuclide. Really, really small, really, really high energy. Okay, so now we're going to look individually at the different parts of the uh, electromagnetic spectrum, first beginning with the, the low energy, long wavelength radio waves. Okay, they, so radio waves have long uh, wavelengths, varying between a few kilometers to a few meters. They're quite low frequency, in fact, the lowest of the frequency of the electromagnetic spectrum. They tend to be used for communication, okay, in radios, and they have low energy. Next is the microwaves. They're really short in terms of a few centimetres. Uh, they have a low frequency as well. They're used again for communications, also for microwave heating. Okay, satellite, mobile phones, telephones, Bluetooth, communicating to satellites. Okay, microwaves tend to be used for communications. Uh, and they're again in low energy. Now we're getting into the uh, high energy um, wavelengths. Okay, so the wavelength of infrared radiation is less than a millimetre, so it's getting shorter. Frequency is low. It's used for thermal imaging, and also it's what we sense as heat. Okay, so in the previous slides, we said, how do you know you're going to be outside? Well, do you feel heat? Well, actually, what you're feeling is the infrared radiation on your skin. Okay, and the energy level is moderate. Okay, so we're beginning to get into high energy uh, wave. Okay, visible light what we're, we can see with, okay, they're short, thousandth of a millimeter, medium frequency, so use it photography and also to be able to see things, and now that's getting into the moderate, moderate energy ranges. Ultraviolet light uh, is a short wavelength, its frequency is medium, it's used for uh, invisible ink, reflective dyes, okay, so to be able to see, for example, if a um, paper currency is fake, you use UV dyes, you can look under a UV lamp, okay, and it has moderate energy. X-rays, these are the high energy rays, they're very short in their wavelength, they have a high frequency, and they're used to see inside the body and see the bones, the internal structures, okay, and they are high in energy. And finally, we have the gamma rays from nuclear uh, reactions and explosions, very high frequency, very short wavelengths, and it's used to selectively treat and kill cancer cells, used for sterilizing seeds and food, and it's very high energy, very dangerous. Okay, so can these waves harm us? So what do you know about the dangers of mobile phones? Okay, so discuss with the person next to you uh, and write these uh, ideas down. Okay, so do you think that these, these waves can harm us? Okay, so moving along. Basically, uh, looking at the electromagnetic spectrum, the shorter waves, like those of gamma and X-rays, carry far more energy than those of the longer wavelengths, like radio waves. Okay, so they can cause things like cancer and cell damage. Okay, so all the waves really have, the, uh, as all waves are really the same, doesn't mean that they are all a little bit dangerous. Okay, so. Basically, I'm going to have, show you some demonstrations in class, and we'll discuss this in class as well. 
So what happens if you have too much radiation? Well, an example of that is an overdose of microwaves. Uh, it can lead to internal heating of body tissue. That's not very healthy, being boiled alive, okay? So that's a major concern about radiation because it can get through into the body and start to heat the internal organs, okay? You've all had um, bad sunburn, okay? So an overdose of infrared can lead to skin burns like this one here, pretty bad. And it's the same also with UV radiation. And the danger of UV radiation is it not only damages the surface, but also damages underneath the skin and can cause uh, melanoma, skin cancer, and also damage the eyes, okay? Long-term damage and long-term skin cancer possibilities. So here's a few exam questions, okay? So some, some infrared and ultraviolet waves travel from the sun to the earth. In space, they are all have the same. So pause the video now and see if you can get the right answer. Okay, so you should have had they have the same speed, okay? So it's going to be the same speed, the speed of light. Next question. Compared to x-rays, radio waves have... Okay, so again, pausing the video, then coming back and seeing if you've got the correct answer. Okay, so radio waves have a longer wavelength. Okay, so that gives you A and possibly... Well, it can't be A because it's not going to have a higher speed because they all have the same speed. So it's going to be the same speed and possibly the lower frequency. Okay, so B should be the correct answer. Good. I got that right. Um, then we have this question here. Okay, which of these correctly links the electromagnetic wave with its use? Okay, so UV. Oh, pause the video and we'll come back and discuss it. See if we get it right. Okay, welcome back. So, UV cellular phones, no, UV has nothing to do with communication, so it can't be A. Infrared security detecting systems, possibly, okay. Uh, C, radio night vision camera systems, nothing to do with night vision camera systems, that's um, not radio, that's radio against communication. And visible TV remote control systems, no, can't be that, so it has to be hopefully B, infrared security detecting systems. Woohoo, got it right. Okay, now for our final question, what type of wave is used for satellite transmissions? Okay, so is it going to be gamma rays, radio waves, ultraviolet rays, or x-rays? So pause the video now and see if you can get the final answer correct. Okay, so is it going to be D, x-rays? No, x-rays are doing with medical and being able to see inside the body. Ultraviolet? That's nothing to do pretty much with satellite transmissions. That's more to do with trying to trick people um, with um, fluorescent marking and marking of currency. Gamma rays are too high energy. They're used to kill things like cancer cells and also to sterilize things. So it must be B, radio waves. Okay. So now we've gone through the electromagnetic radiation and electromagnetic spectrum. I hope you have a better idea about uh, the topic now. Um, so go through the learning objectives and make sure you tick them off. Uh, we really haven't discussed much around the uh, how we mitigate the risks. Okay, so we'll do more of that in class.